Welcome to another part of my journey looking at some of the castles that are here in the Loire Valley and the area that surrounds the Loire Valley. Here in the department of Indre et Loire, there's around 144 that are registered as historic monuments. Overall in France, you're talking over 6,000 castles that are registered as historic monuments. Now you might be thinking, where are you today? Where is the castle? That was the castle, the Chateau de Richelieu. Richelieu, a town that is just over there that's famous for its cardinal. I'm sure if you remember your history of France and if like me you grew up in the 1980s, if you remember the musker hounds, you will remember seeing the figure of Cardinal Richelieu. Just over there is a town that was built for him, given to him by the King of France. Behind me was his castle. All that's left is basically the moat and the park that you can walk in. Beautiful grounds of the castle. Not the best day today, that I know. However, I just wanted to come out and actually just keep the vlog going while I'm going to be in the United Kingdom and I can't upload how I normally would. But it's a beautiful area to come and certainly the town is nice to walk around. I'm not going to show you the town today. I'm not even really going to photograph this place, to be honest. The light's not the best to do what it is that I want to do. I just want to take you on a journey in this particular vlog and I should be photographing some things today, but just not this particular place. You can see that, as I said, all the remains really is the, is the moat. Now, what happened is from the reading and the research that I've done on this place, basically the grounds were sold and stone by stone, the castle was taken away. If you find the old drawings for Richelieu's old castle, you will see it was an immense castle. I would flick up the image, but there's probably some copyright that it's, that it's subject to. I don't really want to do that. Um, just go and do a little bit of research yourselves. You'll see just how big the castle was. From here, I'm going to another castle. I'm hoping I can get something. And then from there, I'm going to a castle that later on in the vlog, it needs absolutely no introduction at all. I've been there many times, and if you follow me regularly, you'll see it. But anyway, there you go, behind me, the Chateau de Richelieu. Unfortunately, long gone. I was walking out of the park and I thought, do you know what, actually, there's a composition lesson for people here to make you think when you're photographing anything really, looking at the structure of what it is that's in front of you, be it the castle or, for example, behind the camera, the structure of Mother Nature and the avenue of trees that's here in the park that surrounds the old Chateau de Richelieu. So, what have I got? Well, basically there's this avenue of trees and the avenue of trees is really tall. Therefore, you've got to think, when you're taking a photograph, what's the orientation that you really want to use to be the most effective when you're taking a photograph? Do you want landscape or do you want portrait in order to most effectively get what you can out of the image? Behind the camera, the avenue of trees is really tall. Therefore, it's much better, honestly, to look at the image and go, actually, this is a portrait orientation image rather than a landscape orientation image because of the height of things. If you look at the last vlog, I included some images from a castle whereby I was stood on the very corner. Because I was stood on the corner and I couldn't really get to the, the, the building that was on the right of the image, it was far better to use a portrait orientation rather than a landscape orientation. And it was much better served in the final image. So just think about that before you actually just go, yep, it's, that's the, you're just going like this. And think, do you turn it landscape or, or portrait orientation? You'll get much better images just by stopping for a moment, looking, thinking, absorbing, and you'll get much better stuff. I guarantee it. So I've moved on to my next castle. It's called Chateau de la Pataudière. I think it's 16th century. There doesn't seem to be much information from what I've seen on this particular castle. 
Now the castle itself is private property, so you can't visit the actual castle. However, there are what they call the chambre d'hôte, like uh, guest houses in another part of the grounds of the castle that you can visit. Now what you can do is get a shot where I am now, or also when you're driving up to where the, uh, the bed and breakfast type of place is, you can get a shot looking down on that angle of the castle. I wanted to do this angle of the castle though, just because of what I was talking about in the Parc de Richelieu, when you have a subject in front of you and you think, do you go portrait or landscape orientation? The angle that I've got on the castle here is absolutely and definitely portrait orientation. Let me show you why. So first thing to mention is the light. Now you'll have to forgive what I'm photographing this because at the moment, the day that I'm photographing it, I have limited time. Should I be doing it on another day? Should I be waiting? Yes, but unfortunately, this was the only time that I could get out in this time period that I've got to do a vlog. But hopefully you can at least gain something from it as far as some tips and techniques of what you should be looking for. So you can see this edge of the castle here. It's very high, it's very tall. Therefore, should you really be doing a landscape orientation image? I think the answer really to that is no, you shouldn't. The one thing that bothers me is, of course, you do have a road that's going along here. Of course, what you could do is clone out that road. Yes, I know that you could do that. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's ideally what you should be doing with this. When you can see that tall structure, just go portrait. You'll get a much better image, much better looking image than trying to do it as a landscape type orientation. It just wouldn't really work. It's not a good idea. Anyway, let's move on to the next and final castle. The Fortress Royale de Chinon, the Royal Fortress of Chinon. This place needs no introduction at all. If you've been watching my vlogs for, for a while now, I've been here a number of times. Not hard to see why this place deserves repeated visits. It's a beautiful, beautiful setting you have. Here, the River Vienne, very often, very quite still. And then up on the hill, you've got the castle itself. The architecture owes a lot to Henry II and uh, it's been there for over millennia in one form or another. At some points the Knights Templar were actually imprisoned in there so there's a lot of history with that castle that's up there on the hill behind me. Photographically, what can you do with it? Actually quite a lot because of its imposing position over the town of Chinon. There's actually quite a number of angles that you can do I won't actually going to show you all of them just because of uh, what it is that I'm working on in the future but um, definitely here in front of the river Vienne looking over the Vienne to the castle from a southerly towards northerly direction it's a beautiful and unmistakable shot it's just absolutely superb to come here and photograph this castle what could you do from this angle Actually, just let me show you and then we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. As you can see, the light is actually coming out just a little bit today. Unexpected. I wasn't really expecting much today. So it was more to be a, a vlog just to sort of show you a couple of locations, really. But anyway, let's get on to how I approach this castle. Let me start with what you shouldn't do with Sheena, or I think you shouldn't do is that you shouldn't just go too wide. I know people go, let's just stick on a wide angle and go from there. I don't think you should really do that. I think, honestly, that when you're taking photos, you think, should you really go wide angle? Is it really going to serve any purpose going wide angle? There's nothing here in the foreground to set off the image to take you into the image in the background. Just don't do it. Don't go too wide. So let's go to around 35 mil, which is something like that. And then you've got to go, right, is that where you want it? Yes. Would you put the horizon in the middle because there's a reflection? No. Why? There's this green band of grass there, the bank, that's leading you down into the water from the other side. That's not going to add anything at all to your image by putting the horizon in the middle. So what I would do is just offset it ever so slightly like this so that basically the majority of the top of the town from the grass bank up is sat 
on the bottom third going up. The other thing you have to ideally wait for here is this, the sun. Now, because of the angle that you're looking at, pretty much the whole day, doesn't matter what time of year, the sun is behind the camera. Therefore, when the sun is out, then what it's going to do is illuminate the castle, which is excellent. So that's a plus when you're here. You can pretty much come here any time of the day. So that's kind of what I would do with Shino. As I said, there's actually a number of places that you can photograph the castle from. There's some places I would love to get to, but I know I can't get to. They are on private property. But there are a number of places that you can actually photograph the Chateau de Chinon from, the Royal Fortress of Chinon. And they're a beautiful castle. Absolutely, if you're in the Loire Valley, this should be one of your top priorities to come to, the Chateau de Chinon. Just look at it. How can you not... As a photographer, look at that and go, ah, it's okay. You know what? That's a stunning, stunning castle out there and you should absolutely put it on your to-do list when you come to the Loire Valley. There's a look at three old castles and, well, let's say one former castle in the Loire Valley or the Loire Valley area. Now here is actually in the UNESCO World Heritage Site Protected Val de Loire, Loire Valley. So this is definitely a Loire Valley castle. The others, they're outside of it, but you know, it's in Andre Loire, so why not? Why not include them? So I just want to be able to give you an idea of what's here beyond the normal stuff that people will tell you to go to. Oh, go to Chambord, go to Chenonceau, go to Amboise. Yes, they're beautiful. Yes, definitely go to them. But there's other stuff. If you do your research, as I'm always saying, if you do your research, you'll find places to go. Like here, you know, this is the obvious spot to go to for Chinon. It's the absolutely obvious spot. About 100 metres that way, I think it is, the car park. So you just park up there, walk down here, bang, you've got it. It's easy, sometimes too easy. But there are other places to get the Chateau de Chinon from. It's not just here. This is the most obvious and I would say touristic and in some cases maybe it is the most beautiful. But there are a couple of others that are worth visiting. If you can just sort of do a little bit of research using things like Google Earth to have a bit of a hunt around and see what's there. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed it. There isn't a vlog on uh, Thursday, although I'm filming this way before it's being released. There won't be a vlog or I don't think there'll be a vlog just because I'm going to the United Kingdom. What's going on? Sadly, my grandmother died, and so I have to go back to the UK in order to go to a funeral. That's just how it is, folks. You know, it's life, it's sad, but, um, you know, what can you do? I get to see my father, though, who I haven't seen for nine months, which is good, and also other family members. But um, in any case, I hope you've enjoyed it. Where am I going to be next? I might see if I can vlog actually in the United Kingdom. I will be there for 16 days. So although I've got 14 days quarantine, I've got two days free. So hopefully I can get out there and do something. There's some plans in the works, so we'll see if any of those come to fruition. In any case, if you haven't subscribed, click subscribe, click on the notification bell. See you again sometime soon, somewhere in this case, Till the next time, stay safe folks, take it easy, okay?